back to the Frontier Western Heritage YouTube channel and we're going to do something a little unique today. I'm Todd Kessner. I am a 4-H Western Heritage instructor in the state of Montana and I'm going to load some black powder cartridge today and kind of go through the process of loading the cartridge. Kind of got my cruddy shirt on because we're going to burn some powder for a test. Also uh, use a torch and anneal some brass and give you just a quick and not a how-to video, but at least an idea of what it takes to load black powder cartridge. And the unique thing about it <clears throat> is that uh, I've got a can of, of black powder from American Mills Powder Company, American Powder Mills Company, uh, on the East Coast, and it has powder in it. So I was on a, on, a, on a trip with my wife. We had our 25th wedding anniversary. We visited friends and, and uh, Paul and Lisa Muzzy out of Vermont. And, and uh, Paul took me to a local gun store there in Vermont, actually just over the border of New Hampshire. And I spotted this American Mills powder can and picked this up, very reasonably priced and just decided that'd be kind of fun to have an old powder can, original powder can from a company that manufactured powder in the 1800s. And we got back to uh, Paul and Lisa's house and he disappeared for a second. A few minutes later came out of the basement and said, I didn't know you were interested in that sort of thing, but he says, you can have this one too. And he handed me this powder can. And when he handed it to me, I could feel there was some heft to it. And I thought, my gosh, it still has powder in it. So I have the opportunity to test uh, powder from the 1800s that uh, most likely we would not have that opportunity and I'm excited about it uh, just, to, just to see how this stuff performs. This is a 1F powder from American Mills Powder Company. When I did some research on this particular design on the can it's anywhere from 1883 to about 1900 and that was the style of can that, that was used in that time period so you can it's a kind of a, a 17 year span but somewhere in there this can came out of the factory so I'm kind of excited to, to give it a try uh, of course the first question is is this really powder from the 1800s and knowing that Paul was uh, was taking care of an estate for a friend who passed away and the friend who passed away was older and was not a collector I had lived on a piece of property for a long, long time. His family lived there before him. Several generations lived there. And knowing that he wasn't a collector and didn't really care whether or not uh, he had antiques, he wasn't out looking for them, he wasn't out selling them, he had absolutely no reason to put a different uh, powder in this, in this can and pass it off as original powder. One of the arguments of black powder shooters, and this is why I got pretty excited about this, is that the powder, powder of the 1800s uh, was so much better than the powder today. And that's a difficult thing to test because there are many, many powders of the 1800s and we don't have any of them. Uh, we have, there are several grades of powder today uh, on the market uh, that's modern black powder, made basically the same. So it's hard to tell if, you know, was there really that much of an advantage to the old powder? Was it that much better than the powder that's put out today? Uh, it's, hard, it's hard to tell, but we're going to get a chance to actually test that. And, and kind of see. So I put several powders out here. Let's take a look and see how this American Powder Mills powder compares to some of the powders that we can get our hands on today. So I'm comparing this American Powder Mills powder, it's a 1F powder, to some of the other 1F powders uh, that I've got on hand that I load regularly. So here's the American Mills powder and it, you look, I'm looking at granulation and obviously it looks like black powder so that's good news it's not a smokeless that was put in a black powder can it really looks like black powder we'll continue to test that but i'm looking at granulation size and i'm comparing it to a 1f go x and the 1f go x definitely has larger kernels to it and so american powder mills powder i'm assuming that's what it is is a smaller granulation in 1f than the 1F Go-X. If I take a look at the 1F Old Einsford powder that I've got on hand, it also is about the same size as the Go-X 1F and bigger, again, than the American Mills. So American Mills may have, it's hard to say if, uh, I don't know the manufacturing process as far as granulation size, if it was standardized from company to company. And maybe some of, some of you folks out there would know more 
about old powder and if it had to follow a specific set of regulations on granulation size from company to company, my guess is it probably did not. So uh, it may be a 1F American Powder Mills company powder that is just their granulation was smaller than GoEx is today or smaller than old Linesford is today. So I took a look at the number two GoEx and if I'm looking at granulation size between 2F GoEx and American Powder Mills, I'm kind of close, but my American Powder Mills is a bigger granulation. So the, the more the F uh, factor in the, in the powder, the smaller the granulation. And my American Mills powder, a little bit bigger than the double F GoEx. So it's kind of between 1F and 2F in the GoEx. So I thought, well, I'm gonna take a look at the one and a half Swiss and the American Powder Mills powder, and we're getting pretty close. And so maybe the 1F American Mills, uh, we're assuming that it's original, was kind of in between some of the other powders out there as far as granulation size. So the 1.5 Swiss, Swiss and the American Mill powder is very much the same granulation. And uh, really wondering if uh, maybe that was just a variation from, from company to company on granulation size. But it's not super small, and that's good news because it, uh, a 1F powder is supposed to burn a little slower, it's supposed to be a little bit bigger, which has it burn a little bit slower, and uh, is good in the rifle that we're gonna test. So let's try the burn test and make sure that it goes off like black powder would go off. Well, it burns like, burns like black powder. Well, I'm feeling plenty confident that we've got black powder here and uh, that we've got a, a granulation that, uh, as far as what's available today, is kind of like a one and a half F uh, granulation size. But the, the one F or one and a half F takes a large caliber gun to test it. And so uh, what got me in the most interested in, in this powder and testing it in the first place is that I've got a 5090 Sharps rifle from Shiloh Sharps in Big Timber, Montana. And uh, it's got a case that holds about 90 grains of powder. That was the, the, uh, the kind of the designation as they started putting nomenclature on cartridges. There was a lot of transition that happened, but 50 caliber, 90, 90 grains of black powder. It shoots a 685 grain bullet. This one is from Montana Precision Swaging out of uh, uh, Butte, Montana. So I've got, a, I've got the, the, the bullet that's been tested in the past. Uh, I've got the cartridge and kind of a granulation even that's been tested in the past for this 5090 Sharp. So we're gonna take a look at how we load up a black powder cartridge and, uh, and then test this at a different date. And I'll talk about the history of the Sharps rifle when we get to the range. This is an introduction to black powder cartridge reloading. It is not a end all be all instruction guide to reloading. There's absolutely no substitute for going to a book like Lyman has on black powder reloading or uh, Mike Venturino and Steve Garvey out of Montana have on loading black powder cartridge. Both of these books read one or the other or both and don't just watch this video and think that you can suddenly load black powder cartridge and you know it all. There's quite a bit to it. We're gonna give you an introduction so you know what you're getting into, but please read the book. It's an absolute must and it'll give you a lot more clues than what I'm gonna give you here. But we're gonna go ahead and start uh, through the process of uh, loading the three cartridges. I don't wanna load any more than three because I kinda like to keep a little powder behind us to, just to have that antique powder. And then we'll take them to the range and uh, and really see what they do. One of the unique things about black powder cartridge is that black powder does not produce the pressures that smokeless powder will produce. And, and so if you have a piece of brass, so this is a brand new case that's relatively hard, black powder won't produce enough pressure to really seal off the chamber wall when this uh, cartridge fires and goes off. Uh, like, a, like a smokeless powder one would. And so if I have a hard piece of brass, either brand new shot or shot several times, they harden, and I squeeze on it, it just wants to spring right back to its original shape. If I have it properly annealed, and this is a process we're gonna do here in a minute, I can squeeze on this and it's gonna, that's why this one is in such irregular shape is that I have been 
squeezing around on it, use it as demonstration. But it softens that up, particularly the first inch or so, or a little over an inch uh, of this top of this cartridge. And then when it goes off, it'll seal to the chamber walls, give me a much more consistent uh, round shot after shot when, I, when I've got a good annealed cartridge. And so there isn't much to it. At some point I'll do a, a video on why brass does this. But when you get brass hot, it's just the opposite of, of steel. And, it gets, and you drop it and, and quench it in water, and it, uh, it gets soft. Steel would be just the opposite. You get it hot, quench it in water. Uh, if you watch any of the TV shows about making swords and that sort of thing, it hardens the steel. But with brass, it actually softens it. So the annealing process is nothing more than gently rotating, I'm gonna get this going, this cartridge over this flame. And I'm going to go a little over an inch down, and you see it starting to change color. So as that changes color, I know that I'm getting that nice and nice and heated up, and I'm going to drop that right in my tub of water and do my next anneal kneel my next cartridge. Okay, well we've got annealed cartridges now, which means the top of that brass is nice and soft and it'll expand to the chamber wall. And I can squeeze this now and I can make this about any shape I want. I don't want to squeeze it too hard or else it'll close and I'll end up with a, a cartridge I can't get back open again. But a nice, nice soft brass a lot across the top. We're going to resize this and put it through the sizing die and then we're going to be putting a lot of brass up inside this sizing die. So I'm going to go ahead and lube all three of these. So we're going to want this well lubricated. Uh, I've got the lubrication pad here and I don't want to get one of these stuck up inside that sizing die. Believe it or not they make reloading dies for the 5090 Sharps, uh, the RCBS, Lyman, uh, others as well uh, still make the reloading equipment for these old cartridges mostly because the black powder silhouette and now black powder uh, cartridge target shooting. So I've got a very, very old uh, Lyman Spar T reloading press and it's worked for me. Uh, and so I'm going to continue to use this. I haven't had any issues with it. So I've got a nice well lubricated cartridge. I'm going to stick that up in there and I use a, a Magnum rifle primer. So I'm going to put one of those in. These are Federal Magnum rifle. And so now I've got a primed cartridge. So just like any other kind of brass cartridge reloading, uh, we're gonna, we just resized it, put a primer in, and I'm gonna move it around. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bell the case so it'll accept the bullet. Let's see if I can get that in there quite the right place here. There it is. So now I've got a belled case again uh, similar to any kind of cartridge reloading brass case cartridge reloading so we got them uh, belled primed belled ready to go next step is to get some powder into them we're going to measure the powder out and if i was doing any kind of production like some multiple rounds instead of just three i would uh, break out the black powder measurer and would use this device right here just like you'd use a powder measure for any kind of reloading the difference is this one is made for black powder and it has no places in here where you can cause any kind of spark and it is very much uh, static resistant as well so static electricity and so it's made for black powder which is different than hand regular powder and so uh, were I going to make a whole bunch of 44 Winchester Central Fire 45 Colt with black powder cartridge I would run them out of out of this particular powder measure put a drop tube and I'll explain that in a second put a drop tube on the bottom of it and could do multiple cartridges at a time but since I'm just doing three I'm not going to set all this up and I'm just going to use a cartridge as my measuring device in the end measure by weight and that will work quick enough for just three cartridges. So I've taken my uh, American Powder Mills powder and I just poured it into one of the cases that we just sized and, and belled. Uh, and I'm going to use this as just to get my, get my weight correct. And the load that's worked for me in the past uh, with GoX, 1F GoX, is 86 grains 
uh, of 1F and it's compressed to, for the bullet to fit. So I'm going to just stick with that. I mean it would take a lot of experimentation with this American Powder Mills powder to find the right load uh, and I don't want to burn all the powder up to find the right load and then of course not ever get a hold of any of that kind of powder again. So I just decided just to do three of these uh, and just go with the 86 grains that I'm used to and see how how that works So I got my scale set up to 86 grains and the the key to black powder reloading is you fill up the case So the lowest load you can have is the lowest load that still touches the bottom of the bullet so if you ever want to load down uh, a black powder cartridge you load it down to the point where it's still the powder still touches the bottom of the bullet if there's airspace in there it could potentially explode so this is where black powder is very much different from other powders and so when people say well this is a low load it's a low load because it's not compressed as much it's a low load because it, it the, it's just reaching the bottom of the bullet the more you put in it the more you got to compress it to the bottom of the bullet so we'll go through that in a second but for right now uh, I'm just going to use this cartridge case and we're going to get 86 grains uh, in this scale and whatever leftovers I have, if there's anything left inside my cartridge case, I'll just dump it in the powder trickler. So let's see if we can get this scale about to tip here. I just zeroed the scale and it's sitting on top of the same bench I was using to, to uh, uh, to size our case and so I did all the sizing and and then re-zeroed the scale and haven't been causing any vibrations on the reloading cabinet since. Whoa and I'm going to overdo it that's what usually happens. So I'm going to take just a little of this out of here I want to get that get that right it either does it, when it does go it just goes. Let's get that back under 86 there we go and trickle some powder in. The powder trickler is pewter and aluminum so again it's pretty safe it is safe for black powder. So let me trickle this in and get it to 86 grains on the dot by weight. Most consistent way to do this for accurate loads and we're right on the money and we're going to dump this powder into the into the cartridge case. All right, so we have our sized, annealed, sized, belled, and primed cartridge, and we've got our 86 grains of American Powder Mills powder, and I'm going to run this down through a drop tube, and the reason for this is a lot of times with black powder, depending on the charge, you can put the black powder in the case and it just spills over the top of the case, but you run it through a, a, a drop tube like this, it, it consistently lands in the, in the cartridge case and allows it to be a consistent con uh, density from top to bottom. And it'll actually pack a little bit tighter through a drop tube than it will if I just pour it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my 86 grains and just pour it in a little at a time let it go down through this drop tube and now I've got a cartridge with the 86 grains of black powder in it. So I'm going to do this a couple more times and then we will move to the powder compression and uh, after that seat the bullet. So my next step is going to be putting this cartridge back into the reloader and using the compression die to get the powder compressed so that it's exactly uh, to the place where the bullet will set. And what we're using is a compression die. This one is a 45 caliber compression die. There's a 50 caliber in here. And all it is is a steel piston that allows me to pull, uh, put the cartridge up in there and it compresses the powder to the height of where the bullet would set down into the case and the reason we use a, a compression die instead of just trying to seat the bullet uh, is because it'll do a lot of damage it takes quite a bit of, of pressure to get this powder compressed and if we try to do it with the bullet we're going to damage the bullet either the bottom the top uh, there's just going to be a lot of bullet damage and you sometimes you cannot compress it with a bullet as easy as you can with one of these compression dies so we're going to use a compression die uh, to get this powder exactly where we want it. it takes a lot of experimentation but this is already set up for me because uh, I have uh, done this multiple times so I'm going to put a, a wad in this is just a vegetable fiber wad. This separates the bullet from the powder. And as you can see on our bullets, we've got a tremendous amount of lubrication on here. 
Uh, and that's because I got a 34 inch barrel and a huge bullet and a lot of powder coming out. So as we talked about bullet lube in, in the past, same principles apply. This is gonna keep the bullet, uh, the fouling, nice and soft and we're going to have consistency from shot to shot down the barrel. So I've got my, my fiber wad in here and I'm going to put this down on the compression die and I'm hoping when I get to the bottom I felt I hit the powder there's a crunch. So I have compressed that powder uh, down to exactly where the length of my bullet is going to hit. I'm going to grab my next one put my fiber wad in here and compress this as well. Getting quite a bit of compression. If I was going to load this any lighter, I still would load it to where at least this compression die set up the length of the bullet would still touch the powder. Might not get as much of a crunch, but I'd still get a crunch on a lower load. Just wouldn't compress it as much. So now, I have a wad sitting in there at the right depth. Uh, I've got the powder compressed. I'm ready to put my bullet in. So that will just go right down where we want it. So I've got my, my bullet in here. I'm just going to turn this over to my seating die. We're going to seat this bullet just like we would uh, any kind of other, any other type of reloading process. So now I've got a crimped load. You can see it still rotates, but it's crimped into, the, into a uh, grease groove right there. slide in my other next one get that crimped and again my third bullet with all of those grooves for the bullet lube and compress that and now I've got three cartridges ready to fire with American Mills powder somewhere between 1883 uh, and 1900 according to the label. The next step that I'm going to do is I want to take a pen here, a sharpie, and just put a little color around this primer and then note in my reloading book, my journal, what this is. So you know you think you're going to remember you get a month or two down the road, you go out to the range and you cannot remember which cartridge is which and which holds what. So I've got these marked with purple and I'll make a notation that purple is 86 grains of American Powder Mills powder from the 1800s. And uh, with that, I wanna thank you for your attention. We will see you next time on 4-H Western Heritage. We'll see you at the range and we'll try uh, and take a look at the 1874 Sharps rifle and see how these cartridges we just made do in that, uh, in that rifle out at the range. We'll see you then. Thanks for coming. Okay. Well, welcome back Western Heritage members. I uh, have a kind of a unique, let me try that again. Then because uh, of uh, Murphy's Law, the nicer shirt you have on, the more likelihood there is you're going to catch on fire. Well, folks, welcome back to the 4-H, nope, excuse me. Well, folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage YouTube channel. Yep. There's my mic on. Yep. You sure? Okay, you know what? I didn't get a wad. I almost forgot to put the wads in. And I'm going to change this over to my seating die. And we're going to go ahead and seat this bullet just like we would seat a bullet with any kind of a reloading press. And why is it not going in there? Is that my bullet seater?